My creative builder son decided he wants to refit my garage. So he was able to get all these beautiful cupboards from a kitchen that he just pulled apart. They're only a couple of years old. I don't know why they're pulling apart a $150,000 kitchen. Well, hi guys, uh, welcome to TJM. Ruby, my 89 uh, XJS 3.6. We took it for its first longish run the other day from Sydney up to the Central Coast. I only did about 200 kilometres. And I discovered some issues that we didn't, that just cropped up, some anomalies that we really have to um, start to look at. First of all, the horn doesn't work, so that was a bit of an issue. I didn't know that was going on. The demister only works on high speed. And so that's either a relay or it could be something like a diode in the fans itself. It could even be a, a fuse. So the horn could be only a fuse. So we're just going to um, do some trial and error and just uh, process elimination and see if we can fix a few. And we still haven't done the carpets, um, but I'm going to attack these small jobs before we actually even look at those carpets now because I think the others are more priority. Another little issue, the left-hand tail light is not going and I've pulled the... Uh, the lens off and check the globe it's not the globe so we're going to check the fuse now from memory i think these things have a fuse for the left hand and right hand side of the um for the uh, tail lights and there are the fuses for it under there so i'm just going to pull them out so we'll check the fuses first it's these two here i've got a test light i've got the lights on uh oh yeah, they're working. Yeah. So the fuses are okay. So I did find one fuse that's blown. That one there. And that's uh, number one fuse, my interior light. So they're actually not working. So it's resolved one little issue. We'll change that fuse. We start, I have to pull all the seats out again and I've got to t tidy up all this wire reach from the, um, I think from just from the amplifier, I've got to reinstall the ECU and then clean up the floors a little bit more and then start gluing some carpet in. Okay, we have to work out this wire reach. Um, there seems to be a lot of these wires are going to the back of the car. And well, they're not even speaker wise because they go into the boots. Let's go and check out what's going on in the boot. I'll just pull this little cover off, and we've got the old six stacker or eight stacker, whatever it is. But I'm going to ditch that because it's missing its cartridge anyway. And it's just uh, stuck on by um, Velcro, which is pretty good, no hold. And I found another amplifier under here. So that's where all these wires are going to. Oh, it's a blow punt, a big, pretty heavy duty little powerful unit. So these speaker wires are going that way, through up the front, they're not coming back. And there's, that's the, uh, those two there are obviously coming from the head unit into the amplifier. And they're going back to the speakers. Okay, let's do something with that. So that orange light wire that's connected to the uh, positive side of the battery is going to the amplifier unfused. That's handy. This heavy blue one is connected into nothing in the boot. And it goes up into the into the power unit, into the head unit as well, as well as this one. There's just too many wires going up in there. I almost feel like I've got to pull that head unit out. <sighs> so I don't really even know what that amplifier is for. Why does it have two amplifiers? I've got to try and simplify this system somehow. So I pull this head unit out and that'll tell me what's going on with all this wire ridge at least. And there's a bit going on. So we'll just sort this out a bit. I'm just 
keep what I need to keep and I'll ditch the rest. Okay, who said I didn't know what I was doing? At the end of the day, it was just too much of a dog's breakfast. It <clears throat> take me hours to sort it all out. I didn't even know if it was any going to be working or not. So I found out I've just got all the proper wires there and we're just going to put a new head unit in it. Well, on the previous video of Project XJS, I didn't have a correct piece of fuel line when we uh, replaced that fuel pump uh, last month. And so we drove it up the coast about 200 kilometres and it ran pretty for fine, but there's a big kink in it and it does make a little bit of noise occasionally. So I've got a nice piece of fuel line here, half inch or about 13 mil. And it's um, near new, it'll be good enough. And I've just cut it to length and put it around there, but it's gonna drip a fair bit of fuel. So I've got to find a little tray to put underneath it so we don't get it all over the garage floor. Uh, messy job that one. That is looking a lot better with no kinks. That had that kink in that 13, that bigger, bigger size one. I don't know what size it is. About, anyway, it's gone. Didn't waste much fuel. I'm going to try underneath there somewhere. Let's see how much fuel. It's still dripping a bit. Not too bad. Okay, another job done. We'll check for leaks. noisy it shouldn't be. I'm hoping that's going to quieten down a bit. Weird that. Shouldn't make that noise. I don't know why it's making that noise. I don't know why it's making that noise but there's no leaks. Okay let's have a closer look to see why this horn's not working. Here's the horn relay on the uh, 3.6. I think it's the same on the V12. You can always pick a horn relay because it always have a purple and yellow wire hanging off it. So that's a good way to find out where it is if you don't know where it's located on the car. I don't know if it's the uh, relay it's stuffed or if the horns are stuffed or the buttons are stuffed yet. But let's start from the horn back and see if we can get that to go. If that's working, then we'll check the relay, and then that's, if that's okay, we'll go back to the horn button. Okay, I've got a little hot wire here, and we'll plug it into the brown. Brown is always hot on Jaguars, unfused hot. So always be careful of that. So I'm just gonna plug it directly to the horn and see if that horn goes. We've got one horn that goes. Okay, so we know the horn's working, or at least one horn's working. Next step, we'll check if the button's working or not. So we want to see if there's uh, getting continuity. So I'm going to use a multimeter for that, and I've just just put it on continuity. So when you touch the uh, two wires, you get a buzzing noise. Into the so it's plugged into the uh, the wire of the horn button. So if the horn's button working, we should set a beep beep. Are we getting something? Not actually a beep. So there is continuity there. Don't know why it's not beeping. Probably just not enough. But it is definitely doing stuff. Probably just not enough uh, connection. For well, that next means it must be the relay. Well, I've borrowed a relay from, um, I think it's from the headlights. I've taken it from over there somewhere and we'll give it out a test. Okay. So we know it's a relay, simple as that. We'll have to find another relay because I don't have one here. I'll have to buy one. Uh, well, I plugged the old relay back in and Murphy's Law, it's working. So it must have been just a loose connection or something, but uh, at least we went through the rigmarole of checking to see how to fix it if it's more than just a dirty wire. Well, it looks like I'm not going to be doing too much work on this girl today. Shame, really, because I had a few things planned, but you just can't argue with that. So I'll just stay in my little warm garage for a bit. Maybe try and do something in here. 
My creative builder's son decided he wants to refit my garage. So he was able to get all these beautiful cupboards from a kitchen that he just pulled apart. They're only a couple of years old. I don't know why they're pulling apart a $150,000 kitchen. I've got to move all this area above. Started as you can see, but what a mess. A lot of kitchen, a lot of cabinets here. It'd be nice when it's done, and it's probably a good thing that I can do it now while I've got the time to do it. But it means I've lost garage space. And even this car has to go to another garage because all that stuff over there has to come here. Okay, I've come back from the coast from my Sydney garage and we've started work on it. I think we're making progress. I think. <laughs> well, my trusty compressor just shit itself after tw nearly 20 years. She really blew its guts up, didn't it? Um, probably a bit my fault. The oil was down a bit, like, I think it was down to zero. So we're going to get a new one, which is good, because we're going to get a nice little smart one that's going to fit into a cupboard with um, a little bit better technology than this old girl. I certainly had my suspicion it was leaking oil. I didn't do anything about it. The well, following day, we were able to get some of the cabinets done. It's looking a lot better. Okay, day three, we should get the fridge and some bench tops and some workbench in today, hopefully. And getting there, getting a little bit done every day. Well, on the end of day three, and look at this. We got this side done. We've got all the drawers in. Stone bench top, which just came with it anyway. And we didn't uh, have enough room to extend there. I could have changed the cupboard, so we're going to have a little workbench here. Keep in mind, this is not going to be a, a workshop. It's going to be more of a man cave. Um, my son gave me this big widescreen monitor. That's pretty cool. I've got plenty of storage happening, but we've still got to get rid of all this. I've got to start sorting and packing out, but that's a good thing. And I've also ordered some wheel racks just cheap pieces that'll go on the wall. I'm gonna whack them up there somewhere because wheels and tires are always a pain in the ass storing them. So I'm pretty happy that they might just sit up there somewhere. Yeah, so end of day three. And it may look like a lot, but boy, have I dumped some stuff. I've got rid of a whole lot of crap and there's a whole lot more to go. I'm starting to feel a bit liberated. Well, we're not there yet, but at least I've turned it into a usable space. Been put on hold for a little bit until I get my son back, um, my carpenter, builder son. But it's getting there a bit. Um, we can use it now and I can fit two cars in here. One of those bikes is going. But I've got my integrated fridge. How's good is that? And large freezer down below. And look at this on this side. I won't bore you too much with this stuff. Well, ho we changed the hinges on those doors so they parliament hinge right back and the toolbox and everything's all been sorted i've sorted things out i can know what i've got and where it is there was 13 years of stuff i had that i just didn't know i had and so tossed a lot things i thought i'd never use this was only a portion of the hundred and fifty thousand dollar estimate kitchen most of it went to landfill so it was great that we were able to use some of it i know it looks a bit kitcheny for a um a workshop but it's actually it's it's going to be a man cave we're going to art at the floor self-level the floor and then put a nice rubber uh, floor covering on there get rid of the wheels there's the seat for the XJ8. God, that's turned into a nightmare. That's to follow on a new video. Well, I hope I didn't bore you too much with my update of the man cave. Um, I'll certainly know whether you can continue watching from the stats of the video when they come out. Thanks very much for watching. If you like it, please give it the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, you can do that too. If you want to leave a comment down below, I really love hearing from you guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.